in our opening discussion, we did say that the things that are occurring are as a result of biotic influences as well as abiotic. Now, as we end the discussion on the abiotic influences, we want to continue with the impact that the biotic ones would also have. As we establish the basis for their presence, salinity, pH, temperature, carbon dioxide presence, etc. Now, let us discuss how other living things will affect the presence of their counterparts. Now, we are looking at how plants, protists, fungi, prokaryotes, all in the community play out. This would bring us to feeding relationships, parasitism, commensalism, mutualism, and even by extension, predation. So we are breaking into the biotic interactions and will examine biotic factors. Now, examples of biotic factors will include the relationship that exists between plants and animals in terms of dispersal, such that there's an evolution seeking to adapt one to another, such that that partnership, that mutualistic association can drive their survival the better. As the anibi is speaking pollen, it is developing its hive, and the plant is also getting pollinated. So it's a win-win situation. Now, these animals have evolved a number of special traits that will allow them to benefit from the resources available for one another in a very efficient manner. And when we discuss diversity, we mentioned that flowering plants are the most developed because of the ability to rely on external agents for pollination, on external agents for dispersal. These are the interactions we are talking about. And while doing that, animals pick up seeds and then dispersal is enhanced. Now, activities of humans, such as pollution, such as mining, construction, farming, will also affect other organisms.